Hello everyone and welcome back to the Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. We left off with Sir Sixpack here, El Vidron. Figured we'd talk to him about uh, Suran here. Red Mountain spreads ash and blight. Sinners gathered at the house. The time of the incarnate is at hand. Um, what? You an Ashlander? Nope, you're a commoner. Nerese Athries found a rogue Telvanni base out in the middle of the Ashlands, but she used Almsivy intervention to escape, and now she doesn't know exactly where the base was. The Shrine of Molog Ball is not a pilgrimage for the casual traveler. The interior is cursed and dangerous, and the temple has not been successful in keeping it clean of Daedra worshipping witches and warlocks. Go view the ruins from the outside, but don't go inside unless you are strong and well prepared. Necromancy, our practice of binding our dead to protect sacred and family property is our right and protected by temple and imperial law. I guess if it's to defend your own burial chambers, yeah, may as well use the dead people that are in it. Nerevarin, the Ashlanders have a prophecy that one day a reincarnation of the legendary hero Nerevar will unite the Dunmer against the invaders and restore the ancient Dark Elven nation. But the Tribunal Temple says this is a false and profane superstition, and they deal mercilessly with those who profess such beliefs. That's fun. Red Mountain is the great volcano in the center of Vardenfell Island. The crater of Red Mountain is called the Dagoth Ur region, where Dagoth Ur and his evil servants dwell. The tribunal built the ghost fence around Red Mountain to imprison Dagoth Ur and his servants, and to protect Morrowind from the blight storms that issue from Dagoth Ur's crater. Alinu Sarin is the priest of the Saran Temple. Avon Oran of Oran Manor is the House Lalu Lord of Saran. Ashu Manu Uraisha is publican of Saran Trade House. Helvian Desail is publican of Desail's trade house of earthly delights. Nevena Ulus, the grandmaster of the House Lalu Council, lives at Ulus Manor across the lake to the west. Plantations to the southwest include Orvis Dren of Dren Plantation, Ravone Arvel of Arvel Manor, Dero Arano of Arano Plantation, and Grurak Gro Bagrat of Gro Bagrat Plantation. Jeez, so many people. The temple is at the south end of town, and the Silt Strider Port is to the north. The Fields of Kumu pilgrimage site is southeast of town, and the Shrine of Molag Ball is north of town. The farms and plantations of the Ascadian Isles lie southeast across Lake Masobi, except for Ulus Manor, across the lake west of Saran. Arvel Manor, Arano Plantation, Grow Bagrat Plantation, and Dren Plantation are southwest across Lake Okay. Suran is a busy trading village on Lake Masobi, gateway to the lakes, farms, and plantations of the Ascadian Isles region. Pilgrims visiting the temple pilgrimage sites of at Fields of Kumu and the Shrine of Molagbal seek lodgings in Saran. Saran also provides food and services for the farmers and plantation owners of the Ascadian Isles, the rich agricultural land south and west of Saran. In this country of lakes and islands, travelers need water walk or levitate magic or strong swimming skills. Good thing I hate swimming. Okay, I gotta know what this House of Earthly Delights is. There's a red lantern outside of it. Yep, this is about what I expected. Okay. Well, don't need any of that. Garothmuk Gro Musgub. Pleased to meet you, Revan! The Ascadian Isles is the green garden of Vardenfell, a land of lakes and rivers, little farms and grand plantations. It's the lowland area just north of the city of Ivik. To the west lies Pelagiad and Balmora. To the north, the ashlands of Balur. And the, to the east, the sinking smokes and lava pools of Molagamur. Avon Oren. He's the governor of Saran keeps business working by staying out of it. If you want to see him, he lives in the large manor west of the temple. Dranis Sarathrum, he's the slave trader in town. Sounds like he's someone I'm going to want to talk to. Nevena Ulus lives at Ulus Manor across the lake to the west. There's an east-west rope and plank bridge north of town that crosses the water just before you enter the highlands. Cross the bridge heading west and Ulus Manor is the first building on the left, south of the road. For temple services, go to the Saran Temple. For services for House Lalu retainers and kin, go to Orin Manor. Our local tradesmen and trainers include Drenis Srathram at the Saran Slave Market, Gorothmuk Gromuzgub the Smith, Ibarnadad Asinarari the Apothecary, what a name, Goldian Bellaram the Pawnbroker, Varara Rendo the Clothier, Renosa Gilavane the Trader, and Rald's Oral the Trader. So many people! Weapon types. Oh wow, there's so many blue things. Short blades include the dagger, tanto, short sword, and wakizashi. Long blades include the broadsword, saber, longsword, katana, claymore, and daikatana. 
Blunt weapons include the club, staff, mace, morning star, and warhammer. Axes include the war axe and battle axe. Spears include spears and halberds. Marksman weapons include short bow, long bow, crossbow, throwing star, and throwing knife. Bows shoot arrows. Thank you. Crossbows shoot bolts. Use of each weapon type relies on different skill. Now tell me about each weapon individually. Axes. Only two types of axe are common here. The one-handed war axe and the two-handed battle axe. Use the war axe with the shield or use the two-handed battle axe for maximum effect. The term battle axe includes all very heavy axes used two-handed. Most battle axes are double bladed, but the Nordic battle axe has a single blade. The great mass and efficiency of the battle axe enables a strong warrior to penetrate heavy armor, but the battle axe is also a powerful shock weapon against massed, lightly armored opponents. Clubs and staves are cheap, easy to master, all-purpose weapons for travelers and militias. The mace and morning star are one-handed, the war hammer is two-handed, slow and heavy. All three are proper weapons for professional warriors. Rank them by effectiveness as club, staff, mace, morning star, and war hammer, with club least effective. Broadsword. Long popular in the West, the mass-produced one-handed double-edged heavy broadsword commonly used by the Legion is descended from the original, elaborate, decorated Breton broadsword designs. The Nordic broadsword developed independently and is a more plain practical weapon. All broadswords are commonly used with sword and shield techniques, the Bretons favoring the heavy tower shield while the Legions prefer a smaller standard size shield. Claymore. Highland Bretons were the first to use the very heavy two-handed sword called the Claymore, but powerful Red Guards were quick to adopt these massive shock weapons to their heroic melee styles. Not suitable for use by close order troops, the Claymore is favored by the solitary hero adventurer, particularly against great beasts and otherworldly creatures. The club is usually a crude, improvised, one-handed blunt weapon, common among less technologically sophisticated creatures like the Argonians! but it is also a cheap and effective militia weapon used with a light shield and Cyrodiil in the western provinces. The Dwemer crossbow is an ingenious device that permits someone with only modest training and skill to fire a missile bolt massive enough heavy armor. The Imperial Legion's mass-produced version is somewhat less effective, and most Imperial missile troops and hunters use the more popular short and long bows. Daedric weapons are made from raw ebony, which has been refined using the craft and magical substances of the lesser minions of Oblivion. The process is not a pleasant one for the Daedrian, ugh, and the weapons retain echoes of preternaturally pre prolonged suffering enduring during manufacturing. Daedric weapons are the most rare and expensive weapons known in Tamriel. Every culture produces some variant on the short, multi-purpose weapon called the dagger. Dagger weapons differ dramatically in quality and effectiveness. They are further differentiated by a wide variety of enchantments commonly placed on these easily concealed weapons. Daedric and glass daggers are shockingly effective weapons, despite their small size and low mass. Daikatana. These exotic two-handed, single-edged long blades of Akaviri design are neither common nor popular for military or private use. They are superb examples of weapon craft, but expensive and subtle in technique. The long reach and high efficiency of this two-handed long shafted axe-like weapon makes it well suited for combat with encumbered, heavy armored opponents. Using this weapon is masked for me. Using this weapon in massed formations requires a high degree of skill and training, and its bulk makes it difficult to use in close quarters. So the weapon is, with significant exceptions, neither common nor popular for use by mercenary adventurers. Katana. Elegant and efficient, the Akaviri Katana is too expensive and sophisticated a weapon to be popular with the legions or hero adventurers, but well-heeled nobles, collectors, and swords masters prize the blade for its superior balance and effectiveness. The broadsword, saber, longsword, and claymore are western weapons. The Katana and Daikatana are Akaviri-style blades. Long blades, one-handed or two-handed, and the most common weapons here. The claymore and Daikatana are two-handed weapons and relatively heavy and slow. The rest are one-handed. Rank them by effectiveness as Broadsword, Saber, Longsword, Katana, Claymore, and Daikatana, with Broadsword least effective. A powerful, demanding weapon, the Longbow is historically associated with Altmer aristocrats and Bosmer hunters. The less powerful Bone Mold Longbow of Morrowind is traditionally a noble's hunting weapon, but has been adopted for wider use by many Outlander sportsmen and mercenaries. The Longsword is the standard officer's weapon in the Legions, and a noble's weapon in the West. In Morrowind, Glass, Ebony, and Daedric Longswords are precious heirlooms passed down through generations of noble warriors in a great house. The Mace is a favored weapon of the Western Knight, combined with a standard shield. Dwemer and Daedric Maces, superb weapons, but expensive and rare, are prized heirlooms of the Dunra Great House nobility. Marksman Weapons Short bows and long bows use arrows. Crossbows use bolts. Bow and crossbows are more cumbersome. 
two-handed weapons, but more effective. Throwing stars and throwing knives are fast, light, one-handed attacks, but less damaging than bows and crossbows. The saber is the weapon of Imperial Light Cavalry. Since horses cannot adapt to Vardenfell's harsh climate, well, what a great way to not have horses. Sabers are uncommon, except among Legion veterans. The dagger and short sword are Western Imperial weapons. The tanto and wakazashi are styled after Akaviri blades. These weapons are light and fast, most effective against lightly armored opponents, but a skilled user can outlast more heavily armed and armored opponents. The dagger, tanto, and short sword are thrusting weapons, the wakazashi a chopping and slashing weapon. Rank them by effectiveness as dagger, tanto, short sword, and wakazashi, with dagger least effective. In the west, the wooden short bow is the standard weapon of legionary missile troops and scouts. In Morrowind, however, wood is in very short supply, and the chitin bow favored by the Ashlanders is laminated bone, shell, and resin. Cheap iron and steel short swords are standard issue for legion troopers. The imperial short sword is a superior legion guardsman's weapon. Retired legion smiths settling in Morrowind have popularized imperial short swords with the growing Dunmer merchant class and with Lalu nobles and their retainers. Two styles of spear are popular here, both used two-handed for thrusting attacks, the spear and the halberd, with the halberd the most effective. Spear weapons have the longest reach of any weapon, except of course marksman weapons. The staff is the standard and formal weapon of the traveler, doubling as walking stick and utility tools. Battle mages, spell sword, knight blades, and other magical support troops in the legions also train with the staff, among other blunt weapons. Imperial steel weapons are standard issue for the elite units of the legion. Nobles, merchant traders, and professional mercenaries prefer the higher quality materials and craftsmanship of imperial steel. Various other weapons of exotic design, in particular the tantos and katanas made in the Akaviri style, are also made of high quality steel. The tanto is a stylish dagger variant of Akaviri design. For obscure reasons, the Tilvani prefer them of, to standard daggers as a matrix for their enchantments, and Tilvani mercenaries are often equipped with enchanted tantos by their mage lord patrons. Small throne weapons are a Khajiit specialty. Throwing knives are useful in cultures like the Khajiit, whose warrior class disdain heavy weapons and heavy armors, relying on stealth and maneuver for success in personal and clan combats. Throwing knives are also popular in criminal subcultures. Throwing Star The Throwing Star is an exotic weapon associated with the martial arts traditions of Akavir. Like other exotic blades of Akaviri design, the Wakazashi is an elegant and refined single-edged version of the more common double-edged longswords of western design. Because the weapons themselves are rare and few smiths know how to make them, they are not common in Warwind. A bewildering variety of one-handed axe styles are found in Warwind. The spiked chitin war axe favored by Ashlander and Great House Dunmer is in some ways more like a mace than an axe. The steel war axe is double bladed, the iron war axe is single bladed, the glass, ebony, and daedric war axes are single bladed with balancing spikes. Heavy two-handed warhammers were developed in the west to counter the defensive protection of the heavily armored western knight. The iron warhammer is a single head with a balancing spike to penetrate plate armor. The steel warhammer, on the other hand, has two heavy heads and is designed to batter or knock down an armored opponent. The spear is a common weapon for light or troops and militias, but has been developed as a martial art form by the Bosmer. In Morwind, the Ashlanders favor a wicked and elegant version of the spear, with a spike at the foot of the shaft. Nordic. These massive steel weapons are forged according to the secret metal crafts of the Nordsmiths, and engraved with runes in the manner of the legendary witch warriors of Skyrim. The unarmed, unarmored martial arts traditions of the Marsh Marrow, Salt Rice, and Golden Reed societies of the dissident priest pattern of the Hold on. The unarmed, unarmored martial arts traditions of the Marsh Marrow, Salt Rice, and Golden Reed societies of the dissident priest patterned on the reign of sand fighting styles of elsewhere are slow to be adopted in the empire associated as they are with the ascetic reuniciate ascetic ascetic renunciation of worldly wealth and material goods and the rigid disciplines and mystical philosophies so alien to the imperial west this is all one sentence that's it's just a bunch of commas i hate this Iron. For centuries, cheap and serviceable iron and iron-reinforced weapons have been produced in quantity for the legions. These and similarly made iron weapons are in use throughout the empire. Glass. These light and elegant weapons of high elven design feature extravagant use of rare metals and cutting edges made from rare crystalline materials. Duelists and assassins appreciate the delicate balance and sinister sharpness of glass weapons. 
Ebony weapons are made from a rare form of volcanic glass found almost exclusively in the buried deposits and surface lava flows of Vardenfell's Red Mountain. Ebony refers to the lustrous black glassy surface of ebony weapons. Chitin weapons of native Dumner manufacture are created from the sturdy but light exoskeletons of local creatures. Layers of chitin are typically laminated using vegetable, shulk, and bug resin glues to form strong but flexible weapons. The serrated edges of the original materials are exploited to create especially wicked daggers and slashing weapons. As it wears out, armor becomes less effective. Broken armor is completely useless until you repair it, but worn armor stops only a fraction of the damage that new or well-maintained armor does. Learn the basics of armor repair and go over your armor piece by piece before every big battle, or visit a smith regularly to keep your armor in good shape. Weapons become less effective with wear. Eventually, they break and are useless until you repair them. But a worn weapon does only the fraction of the damage it should do. You'll hack and stab and slash away and suddenly realize you're doing almost nothing to your enemy. So learn the basics of weapon repair and touch up your weapons before every big fight. Or pay a smith to keep your weapons in top shape. Nothing to it, just get yourself an armorer's hammer and start banging away. Anyone can do it. Of course, anyone can do it really badly, too. <laughs> it does help to have a little skill, but if you got plenty of time and a lot of coin for hammers, you can teach yourself. Actually, unless you're a professional armsman, you probably should pay an armor to keep your weapons in good repair. Salesman. Exotic armor types. Fur armor is a light armor style popular among Nord barbarians. Dreg is a remarkably strong Dunmer medium armor made from Dreg hide, but the most famous exotic armor is Dwemer, or Dwarvish armor a highly ornate heavy armor valued as much for its rarity and antique craftsmanship as for its distinctive impact-absorbing qualities in combat. Heavy armor styles. In the West, cheap iron, steel, and silver heavy armor is made in quantity for the legions, and many are trained in its use. In the East, the expense of the superb ebony and daedric heavy armors limits their use to aristocratic families. Suits of ebony and daedric armor are from generation to generation, and represent a sizable portion of a great house noble's personal wealth. The heavy armor styles called legion or knight style in the west and ebony style in the east require great strength and endurance. The light armor styles of the light armor styles called militia in the west and ashlander in the east favor speed and agility. The medium armor styles called imperial guard in the west and great house in the east are compromises between the heavy and light styles, balancing protection against mobility. A few less common exotic armor types are also found in Morrowind. Both the western militia and eastern ashlander armor styles depend on light cheap leather armors. The eastern reinforced chitin armor, however, is distinctly superior to western style leather armors and offers better protection pound for pound and drake for drake than any other armor. The glass light armors of the noble great houses are in the high altmer style, strikingly light and stylish, and comparable with the ebony and daedric in protection, but are expensive and in short supply. The chain and scale medium armors of the Western Imperial Guard style offer less protection than the heavy iron and steel plate armors of the legions, but with a considerable advantage in mobility. The Dunmer bone mold medium armor is generally lighter and more durable than its Western equivalent. The most prized of medium armors, Orkish, is limited in availability and very expensive, but markedly superior, and is the medium armor of choice for nobles and mercenaries in both the West and East. Silver. High-quality steel is plated or filigreed with silver because of the arcane effects of the precious metal on the flesh of magical and supernatural creatures. Well-heated aristocrats and bravos also sport such weapons for their distinctive elegance. Unarmored. Monks dedicated to the ascetic philosophies of elsewhere have long cultivated the unarmored martial arts traditions called the Reign of Sand fighting styles. The Mages Guild and other societies have had some success adapting these styles for self-defense training of wizards and other armored averse vocations. Students of the unarmored styles wear little or no armor and count on evasion and deflection to avoid injury. I talked to this guy for so much longer than I thought I would and... I didn't even buy anything from him. So, let's go to a different shop. Pawnbroker. I I just need health potions right now. That's what I'm looking for. Once I get health potions, I'll leave. Who are you? Goldine Bellaram. By imperial law and custom, killing is fair in war, self-defense, defense of property, affairs of honor, and sanctioned affairs of state. Other killings are murder and punishable by death, fines, or hard labor. Thanks. Thank you for that. One cheap restore health potion. I will take it. Bargain restore health. Got two of them. I'll take it. What is this other place? I think you're a clother. I don't. Yeah, you're an outfitter. You probably don't have what I want. 
But since I talked to that one guy for so long, you're the last person I'm going to talk to. Renosa Gilvane. Wow, you got a lot of stuff here. You're a clother? Are you sure? I'm fine, thank you. Revan! You can call me Renosa Gilvane. First visit to Saran? We get lots of pilgrims here. Since the birthplace of Molag Ball and fields of Kuma nearby are a popular pilgrimage, is there some specific place you'd like to see? Oh, you're a spell sword. I am a spell sword. I make war with spell and sword. <laughs> Thank you. Combining the arts of the College of Restoration, the College of Alteration, and the College of Destruction with training in medium armor style, in block, defense, and in the offensive disciplines of axes, blunt weapons, and long blades, I rely on enchanted weapons and enchanted armors to further augment my offensive and defensive abilities. This balance of steel and spell, offense and defense, mobility and protection is the signature of the spell sword. Don't bother looking for a convenient system of bridges or ferries across the lakes and rivers. There aren't any. If you're traveling in the Ascadian Isles, be prepared to get wet, or to use magic to fly or walk across the waterways. Ashlanders are primitive native nomads living in the wilderness. There aren't many of them. You have two cheap restore health, I'll take them both. Potion of cure common disease. Yeah, I should probably take that. Alright, cool. I now have health potions, and I talked to a guy that whole time. Uh... Well, I'm going to end that one there, and the next time we're going to pick up in Saran, because I didn't think I was going to be learning about weapons all day. But, uh, you know, knowledge is power. So, uh, stay tuned for the next episode of The Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. Anyway, uh, yeah. Bye.